Up until this point, I've been nice to the Resistance series. I praised their first two games for what they were, but that shit is over in this video. Like the YouTube order at the Blue Oyster on a Friday night, this one is about to be torn a new asshole. <laughs> Now, in the past, I ran about this game, and nothing's really changed from those rants, but let's recap. Resistance 2 created one of the most addicting co-op games I have ever played, yet Resistance 3 has no co-op. Resistance 2 also had a non-laggy competitive multiplayer, yet Resistance 3 had one of the laggiest games I have ever played. What the fuck? How does that happen? It went from 60 people online to a much smaller environment with lag and bugs. What the fuck? Happen? How do you go from perfection online in one game to a piece of shit just three years later and with no true co-op? And don't give me this DLC bullshit about the Madden that Horde survival mode bullshit. You know, th there was no reason that people would have to pay extra for a co-op mode in this game. It should have been there in the first place and they should have had something similar to Resistance 2. In any event, there is no way of knowing for sure what happened to this game. But I had a theory at the time. When this game was released, Insomniac was getting ready to go independent from Sony, breaking away from being an exclusive video game making company. In hearing that, Sony probably pulled all their dedicated online support that they had since Resistance 2. No more dedicated servers, you're on your own, motherfuckers. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's true or not, but fuck it, the logic sounds legit, so we're just gonna go with that bitch, man. Anyway, instead of wasting my time on this wasted multiplayer, I'd rather focus on the series itself in this video. Multiplayer is pretty much summed up very easily lag and unbalanced weapon decisions. Resistance 3 had a chance to truly tie this game series together and the stories together, but unfortunately it did the opposite. Instead of giving its fans a sense of closure, this game left the series appearing as having a lack of direction. I honestly believe the writers and creators or whoever the fuck was in charge of this bitch had no direction for the series from the beginning. They created Resistance Fall of Man, then created a sequel that sounded cool and mimicked Call of Duty 4, but fans didn't appreciate it. And then they had nowhere to go in story number three. I mean, let's just look at the number of things that went wrong with this series. None of these games resemble one another. None. Other than fighting the Chimera, would you even know that this is the same fucking series? I mean, the first game, which by the way has the title Resistance Fall of Man as the official name, how the fuck did the sequels not get any Fall of Mans? They were just numbered names in the Resistance series. What the fuck? How about some unison here, motherfuckers? That's another small pet peeve of mine in this game. We ain't gonna talk about that bullshit. Anyways, the first game was set in World War II, which has war and survival themes battling out in England. And to really put this in perspective, the game was narrated by a female voice the entire time. The story was told through her voice about the adventures of Nathan Hale. You know, other than the Chimera weapons, they tried to use as much World War II weaponry as possible, you know, while mixing in alien weapons and shit like that as the game progressed. The graphical tone of the game, I'm not talking the graphic quality, I'm talking the artistic direction the game took. They went for realistic cartoon. You wouldn't mistake that game for real life, like say, Battlefield, but they went for a realistic vibe with a bit of cartoonish elements, which were probably in part of the studios learning the technology back in the days when the PlayStation 3 first released. Resistance 2, which doesn't have the fallen man attached to it at the end of this motherfucker, gives these guys military abilities well before their time. I mean, this shit looked and felt like a modern shooter. It took place only a few years after the first one. So apparently, technology advances 30 years in this game in just three fucking years. You know, the tone change from a mission of a lone survivor to a full military assault fighting back against the Chimera. It even replaced the female narrator with Hale, who is now the narrator this time around. The graphics went for improved realism and they stayed away from the more cartoonish settings. However, most of the game took place in Chimera Land or whatever the fuck you want to call it. <laughs> You know, it always seemed like you were fighting some kind of fucking chimera made building or a ship or whatever the fuck it was. You know, the first one was all in England. This one was all over US cities that looked nothing like the cities the way they did at the time. At the end of Resistance 2, they killed off Hale, the main character of the game. Seriously, who the fuck kills off the main character after only the second game? You know, fans had some massive backlash over a good portion of the Resistance story. You know, the first game was original. It added elements of old school first person shooters, you know, ideas like health packs and the wheel of weapons but the second game took all their ideas from call of duty 4 you know fans didn't like that shit they wanted a game similar to resistance fallen man because shit if you want to play a call of duty type game go fucking play call of duty so for part three insomniac had to go back to the drawing board and figure out what will interest the fans do you continue the path of resistance 2 
Or do you go back to the original ideas of Resistance Fall of Man? Do you try to mesh them together to create a hybrid of a game? Or do you go in a completely different direction? And keep in mind, Resistance 3 actually took a year longer than most games. As everyone knows, developers were mostly on a two-year development cycle at the time. So Call of Duty always had their studios release a game after two years. DICE was on the same type of schedule when it came to Battlefield, Bad Company, and all that other shit. Resistance took an extra year of development, and the result was to create a game that reminded players of the original Resistance. The weapon wheel is back in this game. The story returns to more survival than badass army motherfucker. You also get a new main character in Joseph Capelli, who happened to be the guy who killed Hale at the end of the second game. His appearance is also drastically changed from a bodybuilder looking meathead that you'd find at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> Don't lie, you know you see that motherfucker there. To now, he's a much older and skinnier man four years later. The fuck? How'd he do that? How'd he go from a tall, muscular Hulk looking motherfucker in his 30s with a Brooklyn sized nose, then he turned into a normal sized man with a different sized nose? <laughs> In Resistance 3. Now, obviously, they use different body doubles and they use a different person to do the motion capture, but seriously, he completely changed his appearance. It is a brand new character, brand new voice, brand new look. It has nothing, no connection whatsoever to the Resistance 2 character. And I know the game is going to try and explain this that, you know, their, their supplies were limited and nutrition was limited since the Chimera won the war. But you don't shrink four fucking inches. You don't go from six foot four to six feet, motherfucker. You don't change your vase from a Vin Diesel lookalike to look like Liam Neeson in four fucking years. Holy shit, this was one of those moments they tried to explain, but the reasoning and logic was beyond bullshit, man. Besides the main character aging 15 fucking years in just four years, the game and colors were less cartoonish, as they went for way more realism than the first two games could ever imagine. The tone of the game was also more serious, as opposed to the comic bookish or cartoonish vibe you got from Resistance 2. This wasn't an all-out Call of Duty war anymore. This was the game of staying alive because we lost the war. Hale kicked some major ass for two games, and now all of a sudden the world has no chance of surviving. This game was about being defeated and survival, while the prior games were about fighting back. In essence, it honestly feels like three different games. At no point do these three games even feel connected. It honestly looks and feels like a completely different game. Even the guns in this game, guns that have been in the series since the very first game, all got different looks, all got completely total makeovers. Such guns like the Bullseye, the Auger. I mean, the Auger has been like three different guns in three different games. <laughs> But the bullseye is a good example. The first two games, the bullseye felt almost exactly alike. You shoot the little bullseye, tags the motherfucker, fires it around the wall, big fucking deal. The guns also look the same. In this game, they completely changed the interface, they completely changed the way it fires, they completely changed the way your hit detection looks. They went for a completely different feel from the guns in the first two games to this game. There was never any true cohesion between all of these stories, other than the Chimera Invasion. The only thing that they had in common was that the ending felt the fucking same in each game. Resistance Fall of Man had you fighting in a chimera building or structure, whatever the fuck it was, trying to blow that shit up. Resistance 2 had you fighting on a spaceship or whatever the fuck it was, something like a mothership, whatever the fuck that shit is. Part 3, the same shit. Invade a chimera structure, take the shit down. So what the fuck was the point of doing it in the first two games? I did it in England, it didn't stop them. I did it in the Gulf of Mexico, it didn't stop them. Oh, but wait, now we do it in New York and the shit works. Well, fuck me, why didn't we hit New York in the first fucking place? <laughs> And yes, I know the story of why it worked in New York. They closed the wormhole to their planet. Well, in part one, the reactor was supposed to trigger some kind of chain effect. In part two, we killed off Daedalus, the main brains of the operation. But part three, we closed the wormhole because these fucking things weren't already here in the first place. Yes, I love when your own fucking lore and logic are failed in your own follow story. You don't even follow the shit. All the things you mentioned in part one about the alien chimera already being here, the structures already being underground, all of that shit completely fucking changed in part three. It's like whoever wrote this story in Resistance 3 didn't go back and play and listen to and read up on everything that happened in the first two games. They just completely wrote a different story. They said, fuck it, let's just finish off the story like this. Now, my other issue with this game that never really gave me any closure is the Cloven. Some hybrid species of human and chimera mixed together or whatever the fuck it was. You know, the backstory is explained through intel documents that you pick up, but you never see or encounter any of them in the PlayStation 3 versions of the game. You do encounter them and interact with them completely in a PSP version of the game, you know, the little handhold console that nobody fucking bought. <laughs> 
you know, it was like a resist. I forgot what the hell it was. It was a resistance series that was on the, the PSP version, ah, whatever the fuck, man. Why the fuck would you introduce the idea of a separate species or race, put intel around the campaign, alluding to a hostile group of these guys, then you never show them in the proper series. Why relegate them only to a PSP game that has no bearing on the main story whatsoever? It made no sense. And again, it shows that this game probably never had any direction in the first place. It was a cool idea to add in part one. Maybe hinting at the possibility of confrontations in part two and part three, but it never materialized. I don't get it. Why bother in the first place? Why give us something like that without delivering on the narrative? They gave us a multiplayer skins of the clothing, but not once did you see them in the game? What the fuck was the point of the Cloven if you weren't going to utilize them any further? You had a great opportunity in part two with the whole Daedalus crap, but no, let's not fucking use them for shit. To tease us with their existence and just write stories about their part in the series through collectible intel was fucking absurd. If they're part of the game, then make them part of the fucking game. If not, don't add them. Another issue I had was the explanation of what happened to Nathan Hale. It was detailed in the intel that you needed to find. Not a full cutscene, although it was mentioned between the conversation between Malakoff and Joe Capelli. It wasn't an interaction or a mission or anything like that, but optional intel. That's the only way you will get to find out the full story of what happened to Nathan Hale. Well, gee, the main character of the first two fucking games is dead. You don't think people want a fucking reason why? You don't think people want to know what happened to this motherfucker, but instead you make it optional? You make it so that we have to collect intel around the fucking map. Yeah, there's Chimera over there, but there's a fucking toilet over there that has a piece of paper in there that I'm supposed to go figure out what the fuck happened to Hale. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, man. My main character of the first two games died. Give me a fucking reason why I'm not playing as him anymore. Give me a fucking reason why he was important to the game as opposed to just killing him off in part two and saying, oh, that's it, he turned into a Chimera, fuck this shit. Don't make it optional. Make it part of the narrative. The same way with the Cloven. If it had no purpose in the game, why the fuck do you add it in the first place? You know, on their own, each game is pretty decent. Resistance Fall of Man for the campaign, Resistance 2 for the co-op, and Resistance 3 actually makes a decent survival story. But as a group, they don't mesh well at all. It's like taking a steak, a pork chop, and a chicken wing and mashing them together and saying that it works. <laughs> It doesn't! Or an episode of South Park making a seven-ass monkey. You can't put certain things together. And this story was a great example of how shit didn't work as intended. I enjoyed playing each game. Well, except for the Resistance 3 multiplayer, but that's some bullshit, man. But this game needed to tie up the series, and it fell far short of what the purpose of a third genre in a series is supposed to do. This was supposed to be the glue that combined Resistance Fallen Man, Resistance 2, with a full story that showed exactly why we had this Resistance series. But it doesn't. It falls short. It makes it feel like a third and completely separate and elusive game. It had no direction. It had no cohesiveness. The series fell flat. Now, pending any changes of heart from Sony, I don't think we're going to be seeing the Resistance series ever again to begin with. Insomniac is no longer a Sony-owned studio, and they've already said that they're not going back to the series. Sony owns the rights to the Resistance series, but Insomniac hasn't been contacted by Sony and they have other projects in the works, so they're certainly not going to do it. Unless Sony gives the series to another studio, I don't see this game getting any more installments. You know, story-wise, it ended on a down note. And sales-wise, it was far less than impressive. It did not sell well at all, specifically Resistance 3. That was supposed to be the game that tied it all together, but just fell completely flat. You know, those I always say, Give me the chance to run a studio and I can make the greatest game of all time. <laughs> but until that actually happens, the series is not coming back. As much as I wanted to love the Resistance series, as much as I enjoyed playing each of the three games, the series itself as a whole fell flat when you look at this game. Anyways, this concludes my discussion for the Resistance series and this is just three games down in a lineup of 55 games to go. Tomorrow and Friday, I have two more Sony exclusive shooters that I'll get into. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.